<laughs> Here we are Friday. What's it been like? I mean, it's just been nonstop. Uh, it's, uh, I feel good. I slept three hours last night. It's been, uh, whew, yeah, crazy. Um, you know, I mean, the media has been whatever, but that's been like my, my tertiary concern. I'm taking the kids to school and picking them up in the mornings and the afternoons and on the phone with the doctors and, and you know, trying to get everything coordinated and everybody where they need to be. And uh, the phone's just ringing off the hook. I've never seen my answering machine full before, but that happens. <laughs> yes, I, I've, I've seen that too before. I tried to get something up here. That's not, that doesn't work. Um, when we talked at the news conference, you said that you really had got a, a clear view uh, of Sabrina. And then um, yesterday we got the released uh, a photograph. When you saw the photograph, you saw her face, could you still see your baby? Oh yeah, she, she resembles me. She looks like my sister, she looks like my cousin. She, uh, she's definitely got some of me in her for sure. Um, I can't wait to see her, so. Have you had a, any opportunity to hear her voice, to speak to her one way or the other yet? Mm -mm. She uh, doesn't, doesn't want to know about me, so uh, it's going to be a process. You know, it's been 12 years and uh, doesn't go away overnight. It's going to be a Is that process. what hurts the most as a dad, that you've got her, she's close, but you can't hug her yet? Really, I expected it. Uh, you know, there was some of this going on even before she was taken. And after they were found in Mexico City in 2003, I went and talked to her kindergarten teacher and, and she said, you know, she's, she loves you, but she says bad things about you. She just got cognitive dissonance about, you know, her mom's telling her one thing and what she sees is telling her another thing. And so if you read about these cases, they all, they are all like that. So, I mean, really, yeah, it hurts, but it's also like I knew this was going to be part of the process. And it's a little painful, but she's with people that I trust and, and, you know, we'll work through it. You know, you can't go into much detail or anything like that, but do you think the progress is, do you see progress? Do you feel like there is light at the end of the tunnel, that the journey is almost over? I don't know about almost over, but I can tell you that Philip Klein told me yesterday that uh, Sabrina, he told Sabrina, you know your daddy loves you, don't you? And she looked down and she cried and she said, yeah, I know. Hearing that, what does that do to your heart? What does that do to you inside? <sighs> that, that means she's in there somewhere. You know, we were talking earlier, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is, is not only about your story and all that, but your story is so many other people's story. I talked with Andrea Sparks yesterday. L last year, just in the state of Texas, 46,000 reported missing kids. Wow. Now, a lot of them are runaways. Mm -hmm. Some are custodial kidnappings, like right. your situation. A lot of these kids are returned. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself as a symbol of hope for these other families? Do you want to be a symbol <laughs> of hope for these other families? I don't see myself as that. You know, I see myself as a regular guy that's got kids and we're trying to have a normal life. Um, but I can certainly see, you know, I, I, I saw another family here in Central Texas that that found their kid, Philip Klein found their kid in Mexico, brought him home. Yeah, that was hope. I was like, next thing I'm like on the phone to Philip Klein, how do I get to work with this guy? You know, I mean, it took a lot longer than we expected, but, but uh, yeah, no, you know, we parents that are left behind, we talk to each other. I've had this amazing outpouring of people that were abducted as children calling me and say, I want to talk to her. So, you know, I'll funnel all that to the, the people that are, in charge of what goes on day to day and see what they think. She may not be ready yet, but, but these people, they want to tell her what, how it was for them and maybe that's something that she can relate to. Do you want to channel some of this energy into, do you want to work with groups like the Center for Missing and Exploited Children? Do you want to try to help these other families in their journey to, you know, to reach out to them in any way? Sure, you know, I, uh, I really think, you know, raising awareness about parental abduction is a huge thing. Everybody knows, you know, stranger danger and whatever, but, but everybody's not real too sure if they're with a the parent, what's the big deal? Well, you know, usually it's, it's not something that's done, you know, 
for the kid, it's usually done as a power play. And uh, you know, certainly in cases like this where it goes on for a very long time, there's a lot of damage. Do you see your, you know, and I, and I use this word uh, a, a moment ago, I caught you off guard, a symbol. Um, if you don't see yourself as a symbol, do you see yourself as a message for these other families that, that there is hope regardless of how long, one year, two year, 10 years, 12 years, that they're, don't lose the hope? Yeah, no, I mean, don't lose the hope. You keep doing it, keep working on it. You know, if you quit, you're definitely never going to see them again. Well, that's not true, is it? If you quit, you never know if you're ever going to see them again. So, what's the message if you had a chance to talk to these parents right now? As a matter of fact, that, you know, there was a story where uh, a two-year-old has just been abducted that uh, the center was telling me about. What's the message to these families? I mean, I have exchanged, you know, in the last several days, several people have emailed me. And, you know, really what I'm telling them right now is like, hey, I can't talk right now, <laughs> but uh, call me next week. Um, but, you know, just you just got to keep trying. You got to go uh, do whatever you can do. You just got to be creative, get the word out. Uh, just don't, you know, it, it's just a funny thing. Uh, don't give up. Just don't give up. Think about, like, what are the things that you can do? Well, then make a list and do those things, you know, and, and some of them may not be effective, and you may spend lots of time spinning your wheels, but, well, you know, you've got to try. How did you, how did you not let this situation and the time break you down get back on the horse that's what I say you know you just just don't give up just just get back on the horse it's okay to fall off the horse am I from Texas or what <laughs> <laughs> all right um, at some point in time game plan to bring Sabrina back home best case scenario got the room upstairs mm -hmm. um, are y'all is the family unit here prepared to have this next part of the journey take place? I have three young children. They, uh, they've always known that Sabrina was their sister and that she was out there and she could come home and they're super excited. They don't understand why, well, like, I thought we found Sabrina. Well, where's Sabrina? I want her to come home. One of my daughters asked me, how come she's not here, Daddy? I thought you said she was in Texas. So they're ready. They're ready. Does Sabrina know that she has three other siblings? And has she made any kind of comment about that? It's my understanding that at first she was very cold to the idea, but that she's slowly warming up. Uh, I, I've heard that she's looked at a picture and she's curious. Is this going to be hard, this journey, this part of the journey? Do you think that there can be a unit again? Or is that just lost? No way. I mean, there, there's, there's going to be bumps in the road, but it's not lost. It's, it's just, you know, time. Love will fix it. Well, let's just end on that one. Yeah.